All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Here in beautiful San Diego, as usual, lovely sunny blue sky morning. And today I'm joined by Trisha Malloy, who is in Atlanta, Georgia. How are you doing, Trisha? I'm doing well. Trying to stay dry. We've had a lot of rain. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, um, <clears throat> we get rain occasionally, too. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly not as much as I used to get when I grew up in Ireland. So there you go. All right. um, and Trisha is, uh, Trisha is an employee engagement expert, corporate leadership speaker on work-life balance and achieving goals. And today we're going to talk about something that is uh, very interesting with the acronym CRAVE, CRAVE Your Goals. And we're going to talk today about five simple steps to attract more clients. So, Tricia, let's dive straight into it. What's Crave all about? Yeah, so I wrote a book a while ago called Working with Wisdom, and the subtitle is 10 Universal Principles for Enlightened Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And when I first started speaking, I would cover all 10 principles from the book, and they're all great principles. They've been around forever. They're uh, strategies like staying present and um, defining your life purpose. And um, I've just packaged them in a way to make them easier to apply in today's world. And when I would speak on all 10 principles, I felt like my audiences were inspired, but they were often somewhat overwhelmed. It was just too much information. And so I thought, well, let me focus on five of the strategies. And if I could come up with an acronym that could make it easy to remember and to practice and to share with others, then I'd have something. And if it could be a juicy acronym, that could even be better. And that's where CRAVE came out. CRAVE your goals. Excellent. I, I like it. Okay. So you have five simple steps. Okay. So let's, uh, yeah. let's dive straight into it. No, I love the, I love the name crave. It's great because we all crave success after all. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So C is for clean out the clutter, physical clutter, technical clutter, emotional clutter that gets in the way. When it comes to craving your sales goals, I can't think of a more uh, detrimental uh, emotional clutter than the clutter of dead end sales leads. Mm -hmm. And you all know when you finally let those go, when you cross those off the list, when you delete them, better things come. And there's a yeah. universal law that says the universe abhors a vacuum. So when you clear mm -hmm. out that clutter, the universe fills that space with what serves your highest good. Yeah. And it's really interesting you say that because uh, a lot of times people, and especially in sales, whether it's sales people, sales leaders, even even you know executive level people, there's a certain comfort to seeing a really full pipeline, and they go, oh, "This is great." I call it the feel good funnel because it makes you feel good because there's a lot of great stuff in it. Yeah. However, uh, however, you're and um, right now you might be saying, "Well, sales aren't going. We're not closing that many deals right now." But boy, look at six months down the road, we're going to be right. killing it. Six months down the potential. road. And then six months down the road, you're saying, well, we're not closing that many right now, but in six months more down the road. <laughs> okay. And I think to your to your point is that um, we surround ourselves with things, whether it's uh, opportunities or whatever, or clutter around our desk to try and make ourselves feel more comfortable when it actually has the opposite impact. It sure does. It sure does. Yes. So the next step is, is R for raise your energy. And when it comes to achieving goals, whatever it might be, Energy management is just as important as time management. And the way I express it is we're, we're all vibrational energy beings and we vibrate mm -hmm. at different levels at different times. And vibrations is just another word for feelings and emotions. It's our attitude. And when we are taking good care of ourselves and we feel appreciated, we'll vibrate at a high, positive, constructive level. And because energy attracts like energy, we'll attract people and circumstances that vibrate at that same level. But when we're burned out and stressed out, when we're not taking good care of ourselves, we'll vibrate at a low, dark, negative, destructive level. And because misery loves company, we'll mm -hmm. attract people at that same level. So I encourage people to be aware of where their energy is and do things to keep that energy high and healthy. So think about what your mom and your doctor has always told you, you know, eat healthy, drink plenty of water, get enough sleep, exercise, stay active. But then it goes deeper than that. It's about mm -hmm. consciously spending time with positive, supportive people and less time with the others. And just yeah. all different things you can do. I'm, I'm curious, John, what, what, what are some of the ways that you raise your energy? Well, one of the things is, and I've been talking about this a lot uh, recently, Trish, is, like, is being very careful about the inputs 
that you things that you allow into your head. And one thing that I see a lot of mistakes I see a lot of people making is is starting off their day incorrectly, like starting off their day, maybe immediately jumping on the news. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right. great. The new the news is there not. To, unfortunately, today's news is not there to inform you. It's there to provoke you. So, regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum, you're going to find something in the news that's going to irritate you, right? So, yeah. but not right. a great start to the day. Social media, same thing. Not a great way to start your day because maybe I see you, Trisha. Maybe I see you on vacation somewhere, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, Trisha, Trisha must have bundles of money, and I'm struggling right now. And look at her; she's enjoying myself. And and again, so I've already set myself up with all these negative inputs. So um, wow. to to raise your positive energy, I think you have to really take a good hard look at what you're letting into your mind and how you're starting the day. And if you want to set yourself up for success, then surely you want to be at your best when you go into the day. So I think you need to think about, uh, you know, your your start of the day routine. That's right. That's right. I hear some people say that they have a a feel good song that gets them going in the morning, like a song that a speaker would have when they're coming on stage, but they play it while they're getting dressed in the morning. Just little things. Absolutely. And and another one is somebody said, uh, you know, if you're on the way to your first meeting of the day or you're about to do and there's somebody who always puts you in a good mood, just text them, call them or whatever, even if it's just for a second or or something like that. But yeah, I think be be very careful because, I mean, that's one thing you have complete control over. You have control over the inputs you let into yourself. So I think you need to pay more attention to those. Yes, that's so true. Yeah. So A is for affirm success. Mm. The studies show that we speak to ourselves at least 10,000 times a day, and 80% of that tends to be negative, even the most enlightened of us, because we're mm-hmm. programmed to protect ourselves against worst case scenarios. Yeah. But the good news is that affirmations or positive self-talk can help to counter those negative messages with ones that support our success. So I was thinking about when it comes to affirmations for salespeople, you know, something as simple as I am a professional problem solver. Mm -hmm. or my prospects love what I have to offer them, you know, benefit from it greatly, whatever it might be. And to be able to say that to yourself as you prepare for a sales meeting or just Mm -hmm. the beginning of the day, because there's always going to be those negative messages. And now that you might be more aware of those messages, when you start to hear them, I encourage you to just flip them, flip them to the positive each time. And what will happen is you will start to, um, uh, hear that positive message as the default. Yeah, and I, and I love this as well because yeah, the, that statistic about uh, negative self talk. I mean, it's so destructive, but it's so easy to fall into to fall into and to become unconscious about it. I mean, uh, and I think if you start, to, as you say, if you start paying attention to what you're saying to yourself, and as you said, if you're going into if you're going, if you're about to do a call with a prospect or whatever, you're going to have a meeting with your boss, whatever it is, even in your personal life, yeah. is pay attention to what you're saying to yourself in advance of it. And I think part of it is is understanding your, you know, your triggers and why it is that mm. it makes you feel like maybe you had a bad experience on your last on your last um, sales call, right? Maybe it didn't go well, but then think about the others that did go well. Yes. And why they went well. And think about, okay, it didn't go, it didn't go well. Maybe there were good reasons for that. I don't need to beat myself up over it. But I think to your point is, um, just like, as I said, about the inputs we do in the morning, the self-talk is so incredibly, incredibly important. I think sometimes to counter it, you should maybe have a list of things that you're grateful for. And that's a great way of flipping the switch <laughs> if you suddenly start you know, listing off in your head, here's all the great things in my life. It, it can turn around. It can switch off the negative self-talk a little bit. Yep. And you're, and you're, and you're getting ahead of the Crave uh, formula yes, because we're going to cover the power mm-hmm. of gratitude. So yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Yes. And also too, when it comes to affirmations, the rule of thumb is to keep them brief, positive, mm-hmm. and in the present. That's really a good way to do it. And by the way, I would say to people, because, you know, people say, oh, affirmations, you know, all the people talk about, they don't work. And you go, you go, okay, but they're not going to do you any harm either, are they? (laughs) So why not just give it a go? Uh, You know, it's funny you say that early in my speaking career, uh, a gentleman in my audience said that he didn't like to use affirmations because he didn't want to jinx himself. 
And I thought that's an interesting way to look at it. And for him, that was his reality. So sometimes people have a hard time with the concept of affirmations. But, you know, think about what your coach or your best friend would say to you. And if you're not saying the same thing to yourself, then then why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so we had clean out the clutter, raise your energy, affirm success. V is for visualize. Mm. So your subconscious mind believes everything you tell it. And that's why affirmations work so well and everything that you show it. And that's why visualization works so well. And it seeks out opportunities and resources to prove that it's true. So, Mm. you know, think about visualizing, you know, in advance of a sales meeting, you know, imagining how that meeting is going to go in the best possible way. It's kind of like mental rehearsal. So Mm -hmm. you're much more confident when you actually go into that sales meeting. I often speak to job seeking groups and I find that uh, the feedback I get around visualization is a lot of times they'll be in in an interview in their mind and they will hear the the person ask them a question that they weren't expecting. And so when they come out of the visualization, they'll be like, well, that's a good question. I I think I'm going to find the answer to that in case it comes up or I'm going to bring it up in the interview. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about reaching deep inside into your inner wisdom through visualization to get more information than you would not consciously be aware of. Um, and yeah, so- And it's, um, and it's, an, it's yeah. an interesting phenomenon of visualization too, because um, a number of years back uh, at another company, we were investing in simulation software, right? To simulate. Yeah. And as we did the research, it's interesting that your brain, when it recalls a memory, right, it does not differentiate between something that was simulated and something that was real life, right? Exactly. And and therefore people had gone through these simulations and they were recalling them as actual um, sales engagements, right? When in fact they were simulated. But so it's the same thing about visualization. If you can do that visualization, your, your, your brain will recall it almost as real memories. That's right. Yes. And there's a function of the brain called the reticular activating system or RAS, and it acts as a spam filter. So when you are clear about what you are focused on, you program your RAS and it brings that information to you. And the best example I can give is that everybody can relate to is the last time that you bought a a car or decided to buy a car and you Mm -hmm. picked out the make and the model and perhaps the color of it. And then what happened, John? Did you see it everywhere, you know, on the road, in the parking lot, even in commercials? Did you ever wonder why? You know, it's simply because you programmed your RES. You said, this is important to me. Mm -hmm. And the best way to uh, uh, accelerate the process of visualization is through creating a vision board. Have you ever done vision Mm -hmm. boards? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. And I do, because then I think um, you should always have, you know, whether it's vision boards, whether it's having your goals up in front of you. I mean, I always encourage people at the very least, you know, have your goals there sent right in front of wherever your workspace is, uh, somewhere you will see it on a daily basis. So just for my, and then, and then to your point is to spend <clears throat> a few moments visualizing those goals in reality. Yes. Yes. And, you know, a list is good and it's really important to write down what those goals are and maybe the steps to getting there, mm-hmm. but there's something about those pictures sure. And so I facilitate vision board workshops at companies. And then um, I also do it for an organization in town called Wellspring Living that rehabilitates survivors of sex trafficking. So once a quarter, Mm -hmm. I go in and I do a vision board workshop for those women. And it's amazing because the process is not, okay, here's my list of goals and here's a picture or a word that relates to it. And I put it up on the board and that's it. The process of going through the magazines and looking at images online and printing them out really opens your mind to what is possible. And you might find an image that delights you, but is not related to any of the goals you currently have. And I encourage you to add that to the board because soon that will be revealed to you. Uh, so mm-hmm. it, it really takes the limits off when it when it, which is different from when you're actually writing down goals. And then yeah. I say, you know, put that board up someplace you'll see every day. And each day ask this simple question, which is, what's one thing I can do to bring me closer to this reality? And either you'll have an immediate aha or later on during the day, something will come up. And so that's just a way to keep you focused on what's most important. 
Yeah, and I think um, I mean I think uh, part of that process too is I mean that helps you establish what is actually important to you because yeah. I think the other thing is um, Trisha that I find a lot is if you actually ask people what is motivating them, often they can't answer the question because mm. they haven't actually thought about what are their actual motivations to do what they do every day, and I think in what you just outlined is there you have you can say this is my motivation. You can look yeah. at it and say, now I understand what's motivating you. So I really would encourage people to, to do that or to think about that because if you don't know what's motivating you, uh, uh, you're going to struggle. When, when you have struggles, you won't have that extra energy to get through them because you don't understand what it is that's driving you. That's so true. Plus a vision board is a great communications tool. So whether mm -hmm. you do it with your team at work or with your family at home or with your friends, what you're doing is you're communicating that to those people around you that can help to support your success. And that's really powerful. Yeah, mm, absolutely. And then finally, E is for express thanks, cultivating mm -hmm. that attitude of gratitude, because what you focus on expands and what you appreciate appreciates. And we tend to focus on what's not going right, what we don't have, instead of what is going right. And to me, I look at gratitude serving two amazing functions. One is it keeps us uh, focused on what's going right so that it uh, helps us to maintain a positive attitude, which mm -hmm. helps us to move forward on what's most important. But just as importantly, it helps us to uh, nurture and strengthen our relationships because there's a primal need for everyone to feel appreciated. And often we forget that. We forget to express that in one way or another. And um, one of the ways to, to think about it is, John, are you familiar with the book, The Five Love Languages? No, no. I oh, okay. Any. It's a great book. Came out a long time ago. I'm write and a that couple down. years Five ago. Love Five Languages. Five Love okay. Languages. Yeah. And the, uh, a couple of years ago, um, it, they came up with a second book, which was The Five Languages of, of Appreciation in the Workplace. So mm -hmm. the five, and see if I can remember it. It's affirmations. Uh, uh, or words of affirmation, uh, touch, um, service, uh, time together, and gifts. And the idea is that everyone has a predominant love language. And when mm. you, you know what other people's love languages are, you can express your appreciation using that language, and it's much more effective. Yeah, that, that's great. And I think also as part of this is, um, I mean, I totally agree with, uh, we tend to we tend to be very good at catching people doing things incorrectly or wrong. We're very bad at catching people doing things well. You know, we yeah. forget to catch people doing great things and thank them. But I also think um, even pulling it back further is I think we're very bad at um, uh, acknowledging to ourselves when we do good things. Right. Mm. And 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 yeah. and looking at when because I think, again, we getting back to what you were saying earlier about the negative, like we can pick out like 20 things we didn't do very well, but we don't like go. Take a step back for a moment and say yeah, something. I did that really well, and I was really good in that. And that was a great question I asked, and that was a great piece of it. And I loved it when that person react, because some to some degree, if you can't do it to yourself, it's hard to do it to other people. Because again, if you're negatively focused on yourself, you're going to be negatively focused um, externally too. So true, so true. And a simple exercise to do is to keep a gratitude journal. You know, just mm -hmm. a couple of nights a week, just a, a brief list of what you're grateful for that day and in, include one unique entry. And sometimes it's the wording about it. So some people might have a hard time with a gratitude journal. But sure. if you can say, you know, three things that went right today or three things I'm most proud of or whatever it might be. But if you get into that habit, first of all, it's a great way to get a good night's sleep because that's the mm -hmm. last thing you're thinking about. You're writing it down and then you're going to sleep so much better than you know all the other stuff that you might be worried about before you sleep. So um, I, I, I highly recommend a gratitude journal. And another mm -hmm. thing to do is to, um, if, you have, if you have people in your life that you know, just drive you crazy, push all those buttons, and it, mm -hmm. people that you can't uh, eliminate in your life, then for one week, choose not to be critical of them. Uh, and instead, each day, uh, with, with what you say and what you think, Think about something that you are appreciative of them. So since that might be challenging, John, I'll, I'll start mm. you off. So the first- and, may, and maybe it's that they didn't contact you this week. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. That could be it. But one of the things you might want to think of is, you know, that person teaches me to be more patient. You know, I no, appreciate that. Yeah. 
But the rest of the week, you're on your own, John. But I, I trust me, within a week, and it might take two weeks in certain situations, you disconnect those negative energies from that relationship and the and, and the relationship gets better. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I think, I mean, I think ideally, uh, ideally you would remove people like that from your yes. sphere. But if you, as you say, there are times when you can't. But a wise person once told my wife and I that, uh, and, and this is something that we often remind ourselves in, is that, you know, we always get, you know, we always say, oh, I can't believe that person did such and such. And she said, she goes, but they always do that. So why are you being surprised? She said, you should be surprised when they do something that you're not expecting them to do. If they always act the way you expect them to act, you should just, just shrug it and go, that's what they're, that's them. But we, but think about, yeah, but think about how often we go, oh, I can't believe they did that. Can you believe it? And, and then you have to pull yourself back and go, no, that's actually pretty consistent. Uh, that's I wouldn't expect anything else, so I'm not in the least bit surprised. So why am I getting upset about it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, this is this is fantastic, uh, uh, Tricia. So before we leave, just you want to run through the the five steps one more time for everybody. Sure. Clean out the clutter. Raise mm-hmm. your energy. Affirm success. Visualize and express thanks. Yeah. So I hope everybody, uh, everybody watching and um, who listens to this. Okay, now these are not major things to ask you to do. This is not a massive undertaking. You can't sort of say, well, yeah, if I had the time. I mean, to be honest, like clean the clutter, raise your energy, you, um, uh, affirm, um, visualize. Yeah, just start with one. Just, just start, start with one. one. Maybe, maybe this week you should just clean the clutter, right? Just clean the clutter. And don't just clean the physical clutter, clean the mental clutter. Because uh-huh. the other thing, Tricia, is I'm always um, hearing people say, and I know, and I apologize again for people who listen to many of these interviews because I do repeat myself on this one constantly. Sometimes is, we need to hear it several times. Yeah, is that people, are, we're very good at saying we're the busiest we've ever been. Oh my goodness, we're busier than ever. And I always go, mm, no, we're more distracted than we've ever yes. been because we're allowing so many in things and we have this thing shouting at us all day long. Um, so maybe part of cleaning the clutter is to, say, you know, I don't need to know about what my sports team is doing right this second today. I can I can find out about that tonight when I'm relaxing, right? I don't need, there's an alert on my phone about some news item. I always say, to be honest, if there's a meteor heading towards your neighborhood, <laughs> one, of your na- one of your neighbors will probably tell you, right? I think you know, so. So you, so you don't need to be checking the news constantly either. So yeah, remove the mental clutter, remove the physical clutter. Start today. Which one right? are you going to start with, John? Oh, oh, now you put me on the, uh, you put me on the uh, thing. Um, I think, to be honest, I mean, I think uh, expressing thanks is the one that I, um, I've tried to do that more. I do have a, I actually have a morning gratitude list that I, that I started not too long ago. Oh, okay. Look at, but I look at every day to try and put myself in in the right frame of mind because I'm not really a morning person. So this this helps me. I'm more of a, you know, I can work till very, very late at night and have high energy levels. My my wife doesn't understand that, you know, like I'll go to martial arts in the evening. I'll do all this stuff. And I'm, I'm all, you know, I'm the opposite of when people are, are sort of waning. I'm starting to really come into oh. my own. But but so I think um, it's um, so I did the morning gratitude to get myself in a good energetic frame of mind. But I think expressing thanks because. Uh, I think, Tricia, we live in a very strange world today. Uh, <clears throat> we're surrounded by so many negative influences. I think that if you go around spreading a little spreading a little gratitude, it can go a long way. It sure can. The bar is pretty low when it comes to that. So anything that you do will have an impact. It is. And unfortunately, today, you can see it. I mean, if you're, if you're in the... Um, uh, if you're in the supermarket or you're, you know, an Uber driver and you go that extra little bit to say thank you or appreciate somebody, I mean, they kind of, they almost do a double take, <laughs> you true. know, because they're, because you surprise people, but then you can see it in a, in a good way and it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. And yeah. as one person, as one person um, coined it a while back is there's so many people today engaging in recreational anger, right? It's become a pastime. It's like, what can I get angry about? What can I go on? What? And let, the antidote to that is just, you know, let's be a little bit more grateful yes. for each other and say thank you. Yes. Beautiful. I love it. Listen, Trisha, this has been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. 
Um, Tricia, all of your information will be in the contributor bio below. But before we go, if you just want to tell people a bit more about yourself. Sure. So um, as you can tell, I'm an expert on developing a positive mindset to achieve goals, reduce stress, and to enjoy better balance. So I do programs on greater goals and better balance. And I also facilitate vision board workshops. And I have a blog. So if you'd like to subscribe to that, just go to my website, which I'm sure is going to be on the site, yep. malloy.com, and look forward to connecting with you there. All right. Well, listen, thanks, Trish. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.